Welcome one to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's The Jetsons, Cogswell's Caper, brought to us by Taito. Released relatively late in the NES run and has become a bit of an expensive title, The Jetsons Cogswell Caper is actually a pretty fun platformer that has some comparisons to the likes of Chippendale Rescue Rangers, as you use the same mechanic of picking up boxes to throw at enemies as you did in that title. After our opening story, we drop ourselves into the first stage of the game, known as the Packing Factory. There's actually a, quite a few levels, some of which are pretty short though as we go through and meet the various members of the Jetson family. And this is actually one of the first games I even played as a kid that had a tutorial at the beginning, giving you little basic stuff such as picking up these pill items will allow you to actually use your special items. However, they don't tell you how to pick up the boxes, so you may not necessarily know right away that that's what you're supposed to do in order to deal with various enemies. Pick up a box and use it to destroy the second one of these cogs as it'll immediately be coming towards you as you try to go down this hallway. You can bait them out and then avoid them that way and then go down, but just easier to use your boxes to take them out. A big mechanic that you'll do several times throughout the game is hitting these switches, some of which will reverse the gravity for a short period of time. Take out these robots from afar if possible, because as they get closer to you, they're going to throw those boxes out, and they cover a pretty good distance, easily being able to hit you. We start off with only three hearts, but we will gain more as the game goes. In fact, we can get them in the second level. Most levels in the game, you end up running into a character of some kind, and they usually just give you a little bit of information, mostly where to go next, aka what the next level is going to end up being, in this case the Botanical Gardens being the second stage of the title. Go over here, hit the switch, and the elevator will start to move up. Be careful and use the boxes to take out the cogs if possible, or just jump over them. You want to do so quickly though, of course, so you don't end up getting squashed. Here you want to stop the switch with the platforms in a nice position so you can easily jump between them and get over the gap. Be careful of the platforms, of course, moving around that you jump safely to the next one and make it over to the far right where we'll hit this switch and take this elevator down, which leads us to the first boss encounter of the game. Our first fight is against Cogswell's pet dog, Centro. Centro will fly on down and either do one of two things, either fire out a little robot that will move around, which is pretty annoying, but you can destroy with the box, or it will fire a gear out straight towards you. It'll then retreat up into the air and repeat the process, doing one of the two moves over and over again until you're able to take it out. Sometimes it'll go to the top platform, the middle platform, or the far right, but thankfully it can't come to the one that I'm standing on with the conveyor belt. It doesn't take too many hits to take out the boss, and we're moving on to level number two. As we begin, pick up a box and throw at the bottom enemy here and go running across the bottom part. A little bit easier than taking that top path right there. Then you can bounce across this pond using these leaves. Right after that, take out all the bug enemies using the various boxes here before attempting to go over to the right. 
On the next leaf that we can bounce on, you want to bounce high up into the air. It takes you to a little shortcut that will give you a big heart. There's plenty of times, though, to get big heart containers throughout the game. This isn't your only opportunity to get those heart containers. In fact, we're going to get a second one in just a little bit in this level. Reverse the gravity quickly to watch out for the giant apple, and then wait for the gravity to reverse again so that you can be back on the ground. If you walk off the platform where there's a big gap in the sky or whatever, you will end up losing a life that way. Be careful of the plants bouncing off of the leaf there. You can land and use these boxes, including getting another one of those big heart containers. The boss for this level is a spider enemy that will do two things. Flying on down and doing a three-shot spread shot that when it hits the ground causes these little webs to appear that can also damage you if you jump on them. It'll then go back up into the air and repeat the process of slamming on down, followed by the three-shot spread shot. Just keep using the apples, you can throw them in an upwards direction as you can see, which is actually very useful in the game for hitting the not only bosses, but also other enemies throughout. So we end up getting a nice item, but we need a remote control in order to use it. And apparently, Astro has the remote control. So we're going to go over to the sports gym, because apparently that's where Astro is hanging out, and go talk to him. This is one of the short levels in the game. Watch out for the wrestler, just let him jump over your head. Go over to the left side, hit the switch, which will cause the platforms in the middle to start rotating around. Jump safely between them and talk to Astro to finish up the level. Yep, that's it. Next up is the gear factory, so you can expect, um, well, a bunch of gears for sure, and that's what we're going to be doing right away. Take out a few enemies and then jump to the set of gears as they rotate around. Here we're going to hit the switch to reverse gravity, and what's funny is you can actually reverse gravity and take out enemies that way. There's also a little shortcut here, we can go up here and through this little area. Be careful not to get crushed here, as well as these robots flying overhead dropping the boxes. Just kind of bait them to throw their box, and then go underneath of them. Wait a few moments on this rotating gear for the platform to make its way back, and then head on over to the far right side, where you'll hit another switch reversing it and going into a pipe. The doctor gives us a little bit of information about the upcoming level, and while it sounds scary, it's just a normal stage, just with a little gimmick. Watch out for these robots, though, the sweeping janitor robots. You have to hit them from behind. If you try to attack them from the front, they're just going to end up swiping the box that you throw at them away, and you won't be able to do damage to them. The elevator you're on will come to a stop. You'll have to throw some boxes out of the way and then hit the switch again. Take out another one of those robots where the platform will rise one more time and then finally come to a rest. For the next segment, we have the quickly, and I mean quickly, run away from this giant gear machine. You want to pick up one box while running, but just hold on to the one and you'll use it a few moments later to take out an enemy. 
There's gonna be one more enemy a little bit farther into this segment that we have to jump over. You could throw a box at him as well, but stopping to pick up more than one box may potentially slow you down enough so the machine ends up catching up with you. So you gotta be very, very careful when running through this whole segment. At any point, if you want to use any of the items you got, you can press the start button to pause the game and then select which of the items that you would like to use. Some of which are very useful, such as the shield that gives you invulnerability that we'll get, as well as that remote control plane that you can use to take out enemies from afar. It's time for the next boss fight. It's in a scrolling arena. Start off by immediately launching all the boxes that you start off with at the gear boss. This way you'll at least have a decent start to the fight. It'll bounce around, immediately get to the other side then, so that you're safe on the far right side. During the fight, Cogswell will end up reversing the gravity, so you have to deal with that. Be careful, of course, when this happens. Usually I just like to wait around until it reverses back, so I can safely get back down the ground level and launch another box at the boss. If the boss bounces at any point towards you, just go underneath and avoid him if you possibly can and then get back to the opposite side to keep doing the process, once again watching out if the gravity gets reversed. Because of the whole congested space, it's a relatively challenging fight, but hopefully you have the five heart containers at this point and have a decent amount of health going into the fight. Next up, we're heading over to Dreamland. And no, not the same Dreamland from Kirby's Dreamland, or the Dreamland that Mr. Dream from Punch-Out is from. Another Dreamland. There's many, many Dreamlands in video games. Either way, watch out for the zombie-like workers here that are walking around with the weird hats on. I guess that's controlling them. They will flip the TV on, which will cause enemies to spew out of it, which is kind of weird. I guess they're taking the dreams and making them real so that you have to deal with them. Once you go over here and hit the switch, then go to the left and hit that switch. As soon as you make a little bit of movement, it'll transform itself into the botanical gardens, just for a little bit, so you kind of give a an interesting look at a level that we've already done. Cool, A cool throwback to something in a game that we haven't made it that far in quite yet. Hit the switch at the end, you'll have more of what we were just doing, watching out for the TV being on, as well as a few of those zombie-like enemies, and hit another switch at the end. Once again, go to the left switch and hit that one. Use both boxes to immediately take out a couple of enemies. And then watch out for these weird ghost entity things that are popping out. You can just kind of run across quickly to get past them. Thankfully, there's a little bit of health right afterwards. Now it's time for the boss encounter. This boss will fly overhead, starting off dropping off some robots. The robots aren't too bad. You can just hit them with the box or just jump over them to avoid them. He will keep flying and dropping them as he flies over. Sometimes low, sometimes high, but just have the box in hand and you can throw it up and time it right just to keep delivering those attacks. Compared to the previous fight that we just dealt with, this one ends up being a lot easier in my opinion. Once you defeat the boss, go over and talk to him after the boss fight is over, and then we're moving on to the next area. This is another one of those short stages, the Spaceball Stadium, as we are visiting Elroy. 
even though it is a very short level, it is a little bit difficult just because you have to bounce on these springs and avoid a few enemies along the way. Hit this spring and make sure you go underneath the enemy, and then just run over to the far right and talk to Elroy. Next up is my least favorite level in the entire game, the Blast Furnace. This one is filled with fiery lakes that can be a real pain, as well as several switch gimmicks, such as one that you have to keep hitting so the lights turn back on, like now, and another one later on where we have to keep lowering the water level. Watch out for this guy, I'm going to go ahead and use my item, though what you should do is jump back to the far left platform. But just for fun, I'm going to go over to the right, and use my invincibility just to show that off and take out the boss again when the platforms rotate back around. Like I said, several of the items you get can be pretty useful. Up here, hit the switch to make the platform appear and then start working your way across. Just keep hitting every switch that you come to, pretty much, so you can get the lights back on, as well as the platforms to appear. Here, drop on down. You can thankfully drop down pretty far safely. Just hug the right wall so that when you get far down, you'll be able to land safely on the platform. Here, I'm going to reverse gravity, taking out the enemy. And now, I'm going to switch over to my gravity boots. Use the gravity boots to go up to the ceiling. This basically is the same as the switch, except it only affects you, of course. And that way we can avoid the giant lake of lava there. Here we go with the fun area of the rising and lowering water level that we also have to deal with with the boss encounter. This area moves pretty slowly, and you have to consistently keep hitting these switches. Here I'm going to show you why this item is very useful, the spaceship that you're able to use with the remote control. It automatically will home in on an enemy and take them out, so you can attack someone from afar and not have to worry about using a box. Here we have to wait for the right moment to get past the lava. It gives you just a brief period of time. Like it starts off with just a second or so, and then the next time around, it'll have a bigger gap that you'll be able to get across. Sometimes these enemies can be exceptionally annoying if you don't take them out just because of them moving back and forth, and you're in already tight quarters without being able to really move around all that much. to be extra careful, make sure I get up far enough, watching out for the lava. Here we meet another character, once again pretty much just telling us, yeah, you should come visit another level. <sighs> We're only in the middle of potentially dying in a giant lava-filled room, and... The robot's just like, yeah, you should just come visit this place I created, you know. So here we go with the next boss encounter here. It's a giant fire hose enemy. It'll move back and forth as well as fire out giant balls of water at you that you'll have to try to dodge out of the way of. The water level affects him as well as you can see, so... Make sure that you account for that when you're about to throw whatever box you may have at it. Just 
Just keep moving back and forth, left and right, alternating your pathway, and dodging as many of his attacks as you can. It's a little bit of a slow fight compared to some of the others, just because he does keep retreating. But as long as you're able to dodge most of the cannonball fire, you should be able to take him out. Next up is Cosmo World. As we get here, we find out that it's been taken over by a pair of aliens that we're going to have to deal with. Watch out for the floating UFO-like aliens moving across. Then, right afterwards, you'll have some meteors flying down and some giant dinosaur-like aliens that you have to deal with. Thankfully, you can attack them from afar. Hitting the switch, we have the anti-gravity kind of turned on here, so we have a, a much, much higher jump now, basically moon jump. Just keep moving forward. If you do, you should be able to avoid most of the meteor showers that keep coming down. Here we go with the boss encounter. I make a mistake right away. I didn't time it correctly. What you need to do is hit the button at the right time and you'll grab the star and be able to throw it back at this enemy. Once you get a nice pattern going, it's not too bad, but you have to get this pattern kind of set where the meteors are going to keep coming down away from you and you can just duck underneath him in the center. Once that kind of gets established, you shouldn't have too much trouble with this fight. You do have to take out both enemies and you can attack the top one first if you want to. But I just find it easier just deal with the one on the bottom and then deal with the one on top afterwards. The one on top, when it comes down, will throw stars now instead of doing the meteor shower thing. You'll once again be grabbing them. It also just runs across the screen, so be prepared to pick up the star, throw, and jump over the boss as it runs. It'll take a while, but thankfully it's a pretty straightforward pattern dealing with them. And once we've dealt the last blow, we're moving on to the next level. The next level changes up the gameplay a bit. We're going to visit Judy at the Rock Concert Hall, and for this stage, you're actually riding on a board, and you have to dodge all these enemies. You're unable to attack them, you just have to dodge, but it is something fun that at least changes up the gameplay a little bit. You have these giant speakers that will show up and fire out words. Just watch out to make sure you're not on the same level as them and you'll avoid their fire. You have these annoying guitar playing enemies that will throw out notes towards you. It does the same pattern every time though. Firing from the right, going around half circle on the left side, then back around one more time and leaving the screen. You then have the annoying like fans that jump up and try to grab your board. They'll grab it and pull you down, so you have to be careful of them. Thankfully though, you can easily get underneath of them or just avoid them altogether. The level in general though isn't too long. Just a little bit of dodging we have left, and we can talk to Judy and move on to the next stage.
Here we're at the penultimate level, pretty much. Cogswell's office. We have to deal with Cogswell finally, though this isn't the last stage of the game. We have one more stage to go after this one. Be careful of the giant robot. Just spam those box throws, and you should be able to take him out before he moves very far. Here we have a little bit of a humorous cutscene that we get to see play out. Right afterwards, watch out for the cat robot enemies, and then you'll have to wait for these monitors to slowly move around so that you can jump safely to them like a platform. Unfortunately, they move pretty slow. And for this one, we have to wait till it goes all the way around, and then we're able to pull the switch and run across the ceiling real fast. This allows us to get over to the next platform safely. Use the boxes to take out the cat robot, before then hitting the next switch and flipping the gravity. Quickly going across, watching out though to be safe that you don't fall and land on one of the spikes. Landing in the spikes is instant death, you'll just fall pretty much straight through and lose a life that way. Here we have another room with that robot, just do the same thing you did before, spam your attacks and take it out before it really gets a chance to do a whole lot. Here we have to be very careful trying to get rid of a couple of boxes on the right side so that we can safely make it on this platform. You don't want to like jump towards it so that you end up picking up one box and falling and going through the spikes. Here, reverse the gravity, getting rid of the enemy, and run quickly across the little gap. Over here, hit the switch and it'll start making the monitor move. Then go over to the opposite side, hitting the next switch, and making the other monitor move around. Once you climb on up, you're once again waiting for a monitor. It's, a, it's just absolutely thrilling. Right afterwards, though, we have a rematch against Centro, the boss that we fought in the first level of the game. Centro is just going to stay still, though, this time, and keep launching out the various little robots. Use the boxes that are gathered here to keep throwing up at him and take him down. It's now time for the battle against Cogswell, and it's pretty much the final boss. The one that we deal with in the next level is more of just us figuring out a sequence real quick instead of actually a boss fight. This fight is broken up into three forms. The first form is my least favorite. The Mesa Ball-like spike things can come at you pretty easily. As you move back and forth, just trying to pick up the boxes and launch up at Cogswell. You basically just want to try to be on the opposite side from wherever he's closest to, to have the best chance of survival. However, you're going to want to, of course, try to move quickly back and forth to get the next set of boxes so you can deliver more damage, so it's a little bit of a catch-22. The second form, though, thankfully a heck of a lot easier. This UFO-like thing will just fly back and forth, it'll do a dive, which you can easily dodge by being on the far left or right sides of the screen, and it'll do a landing sequence, which goes really slowly and will happen right after it flies across, so you should be able to be on the opposite side, avoiding it without any incident. Now the final form is a little bit more challenging, it's able to throw some gears out on the far left and right side, 
as well as it will shoot lightning straight down from the middle area of the ship. So you want to make sure that you don't stay underneath of Cogswell for too long and you're able to quickly get away. Unfortunately, when you throw your boxes, sometimes they may hit the cogs and get eliminated that way without doing damage. You have to get rid of both boxes on a side before the other side will spawn boxes. So you have to be careful sometimes with Cogswell that you don't end up getting hit while you're trying to get that second box. A lot of times I'll wait for that lightning to dissipate then quickly go underneath and get to the other side and pick up that next box. Once he's taken care of though, we get to move on to the next level which is the Jetsons home before the final stage of the game. Here at the Jetsons home, it counts I guess as a somewhat level here as we basically just get to walk through and talk to the various members of the Jetson family before we head off once again. Once you talk to Jane at the end, it goes to another cutscene and we're moving on to the final level of the game. Here we are, the final level of the game, Cogswell's Mining Factory Facility, and we're going to stop it from doing what it's doing. Sometimes it can be hard to watch out for these claws that come down. Thankfully, there's a large heart container that can also just straight up replenish our health. Watch out for these platforms as they appear and move quickly across the gap. Here, we're going to hit this switch to reverse the gravity a bit. If you waited a moment or two more, you could get those robots to appear on screen and then hit the gravity switch to get rid of them. Here you want to hit it so that you can jump between the various spikes. At the end of the area, hit the switch and it'll open up the floor, drop on down. Take out the robot at the bottom and move on to the next screen. Now when you're on here, you want to quickly move over to the far right, getting rid of the boxes, and hit the switch. Then come back, and you want to get rid of the next set of boxes over here to get to the next switch, where you'll then do the same for this set of boxes. Wait for the gravity to stop so that you're safely on the ground, and then hit that next switch. You want to then quickly run all the way over to the left and hit the next switch. After the spike wall retreats, the door will open up. Then drop back down and go up and hit the next set of boxes. You can do either side first, but you're going to have to do one side, drop, and then do the other. It's just hard to make any sort of movement going back and forth along that area. Just be very, very careful of the spikes as they are instant death. Once again, watch out for a giant wall as it tries to crush you. 
drop on down, reversing the gravity once again, and as the wall goes away, it'll get rid of the door so you can go on through. Here we find out that the computer is pretty much going berserk, and we have to figure out what to do in order to shut it down. You basically have three switches, and you have to hit them in the right order. After you get done talking to the creature here, the floor will open up and you can drop down into the room with the computer. Rocks will be falling down, you have to watch out for those and hit the switches on the computer in the right order. You just have to keep trying different patterns until you get the right one. Once you do, you then have to escape real quick before we can call it a day. Quickly run over to the right, you can jump along and just keep going across this bridge really quick. And then you're going to make a series of quick jumps. Take your time with them, just a second. You can hesitate for just a moment. Be careful of the rocks, some of them will end up hitting you potentially. But when you make it to the ship at the end, you can enjoy the credits for Jetson's Cogswell's Caper. So there you have it, Jetson's Cogswell's Caper for the NES. A really fun platformer. I'm not sure how many people have gotten the chance to play it. It came out relatively late in the NES run, and it has gotten pretty expensive over the years. But for a license-based title, it's pretty decent. And it's funny that so many cartoons ended up getting some decent games back on the NES. After the credits, we then get another little cutscene as the game finishes up. Gotta love the ending right there with Jetson being yelled and waking poor George up. But that's also going to end this episode of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.